Skylar Bailey here, author of The Rucksack and of the book Heroes in Good Company, L Company, 86th Regiment, 10th Mountain Division, 1943 to 1945. I found this photo on the Denver Public Library's online collection of 10th Mountain Division photos and wanted to tell you a little bit about it because I think it speaks to who these men were. It's a collection of soldiers of L Company of the 86th at Camp Hale, Colorado, taken during the spring or early summer of 1944, after the grueling D-Series training exercise, and not too long before their transfer to Camp Swift, Texas, where they would continue to train until they were deployed to fight the Germans in Italy in December of that year. On the left we have John Winchester, who was transferred to Company B of the 86th in July of 1944, before L Company was deployed. The rest of the men in the photo went overseas with L Company. On the far right, we have Bob Mahoney, who joined L Company in July 1943. He was in all of the company's major engagements and made it through the war without physical injury. He was awarded the Bronze Star. When his platoon leader was badly wounded during the company's first offensive on Mount Gorgolesco, Bob helped him to a place of safety and then spent the day trying to find a litter team to collect him. He was not successful, as the aid station was full and the medical staff were being overwhelmed with the number of casualties coming in. After dark, he finally collected a few German prisoners and led them back to his wounded platoon leader and had them carry him to the aid station. Bob Mahoney went on to serve in the Korean War and died of a heart attack in 2000. Next, we have Merrill Archard, who joined L Company in October 1943. He became a sergeant and was involved in some early patrols and helped blunt a German attack on an outpost at Querciola. He received severe shrapnel wounds to the legs on Mount Gorgolesco on February 20th, 1945, and was away from the company for several weeks recovering, but returned in time for the April offensive. On April 16th, they encountered three German panzers, and Archer went forward to try to find a good attack position, and one of the panzers fired a round that sent shrapnel through his face, carrying away a number of his teeth. He survived his wounds and was awarded a Bronze Star. He later became a college professor, founded a summer camp in Maine, and died in 2010. Next is Edward Lucky Lachandro. He got the nickname Lucky because his last name reminded the rest of the guys of the famous mobster Lucky Luciano. When L Company deployed overseas, Lachandro had been in the unit longer than anyone else. He was a sergeant and was awarded the Bronze Star for exposing himself to enemy fire while dragging a number of wounded men out of the line of fire during an intense fight. He was in all of the company's major engagements and went unscathed until their last action at the town of Torbellay on April 30th, 1945, when a large German armor and infantry force attacked, one of the panzers fired a round that landed in front of Lachandro. A large shell fragment passed through his right shoulder and small metal splinters lodged in his eyes. He had a long recovery that included the use of a powerful magnet to extract the metal from his eyes. He returned to his home in Queens and became postmaster. I had the extreme fortune of meeting and interviewing Ed in 2019. Before he passed away in 2022, he was the company's last known surviving veteran. Next up is Stuart Kirchner, who joined L Company in April 1943 and rose to the rank of sergeant before they deployed to Italy. During the company's first major offensive on Mount Gorgolesco, they attacked without flank support and found themselves surrounded on three sides. Kirchner was wounded in that fight, but returned to service. When the company first sergeant was severely wounded during the April offensive, Sergeant Kirchner replaced him and served through the remainder of the war and was awarded the Bronze Star. He died in 1986. Last, we have Dylan Snell, who abandoned his freshman year at Michigan State to enlist in the Army and joined L Company at Camp Hale, Colorado in April 1943. He became a sergeant in 2nd Platoon. He was almost killed during their first major offensive when an American plane providing support dropped two 500-pound bombs on the company. One bomb caused five casualties, including the platoon commander. The other bomb landed right next to Snell, but did not detonate. Sergeant Snell assumed command of the platoon and led it through the remainder of the day's attack, and then in subsequent operations on Mount Della Taracha, where his platoon held a forward outpost in a farmhouse for a week under almost constant mortar, artillery, and infantry attack. It was for this that he was awarded the Bronze Star. On April 19th, his platoon was pinned down by German infantry and armor at the base of a steep ridge near Capelli. His new lieutenant was wounded, and Snell again took command of the platoon. Before he could organize any forward movement, a shell fragment struck Dylan Snell in the face and smashed several of his teeth. He survived his wound, had a 30-year career with the Army, started a construction company in Texas, 
and traveled back to Italy and met the owners of the farmhouse he'd defended on Mount Della Terraccia. Their meeting was actually caught on camera, and thanks to the Denver Public Library, you can watch it on YouTube, link in the description. It's worth noting that of the five men in this photo who went to Italy with L Company, four of them were wounded, one of them twice, and all were awarded the Bronze Star. But it's even more notable that this photo is not an anomaly. Many of the pictures from Camp Hale contain groupings of men who all sacrificed for the cause and distinguished themselves in action. In their company, this was the rule rather than the exception.